right guys and welcome back to the only channel bringing you BMET tips and tricks to make it through the schoolhouse. Today in class we discussed inductors, inductive series circuits, and inductive parallel circuits. That's enough of what we did today, so let's get into the review. The schematic reference symbol for an inductor is L. They are measured in Henry's and are comprised of a core and a coil, which is a wire wrapped around the core. What does an inductor do? Well, an inductor is a frequency sensitive component meaning that its ohmic value depends on the frequency present in the circuit and the value of the inductor. Refer to your note-taking guide for the specific changes that cause an inductor's value to change. Now to talk about phase relationships. If we utilize the word Eli to remember the phase relationship of voltage to current, we can say that voltage leads current by 90 degrees. We can also say that current lags voltage by 90 degrees. Inductors are identified by the silver band as the first band on the component. We calculate them almost exactly the same as resistors with a few small changes. The second and third bands are your significant digits. Band 4 is the amount of zeros and band 5 is your tolerance. When punching this into your calculator, it will always be followed by micro before hitting equals. We need to be able to determine which component in the circuit is dominant. If you recall, when we went over series resistive circuits, we called them voltage dividers. The largest ohmic value in a series circuit will yield the largest voltage drop. Therefore, the largest value is dominant and determines what the circuit is. Compare the resistive value to the ohmic value of the inductor. In this case, the circuit is mostly resistive. If you remember from earlier in the video, inductors are a reactive component, meaning that when the frequency changes, the ohmic value of the inductor changes. The formula to calculate inductive reactance is 2 pi fruity loops, or 2 pi times frequency times inductance. If frequency or inductance increases, the voltage drop of the inductor increases, along with the ohmic value of the inductor and total impedance. This is the couch in our couch coffee table. The coffee table includes the voltage drop of the resistor and the total current. These will do the exact opposite of the couch. They will decrease with an increase in frequency or inductance. Now, if frequency or inductance decreases, the EL, XL, and ZT will decrease, and the ER and IT will increase. A parallel circuit is called a current divider. The smallest ohmic value will allow the largest current flow. The component with the smallest ohmic value is dominant and determines the condition of the circuit. Here we see that our resistance total is 9K ohms, and that our inductive reactance, or XL, is 4K ohms. Don't forget to use the reciprocal formula when getting XLT. Therefore, we could call this circuit mostly inductive. When we look at Ohm's law theory for a parallel circuit, we know that voltage is constant in a parallel circuit. With that, voltage is not required for our theory unless the power supply changes. If frequency or inductance goes up, XL and ZT will go up and IT will go down. If frequency or inductance goes down, XL and ZT will go down and IT will go up. Alrighty guys, that's what you need to know for inductors. As always, stay classy and keep your head up.